You may be seated. If you don't mind, for about one or two minutes, I know the spirit is flowing in here. But for about one or two minutes, let us all join in corporate prayer and pray that the Holy Spirit will really truly have his way for this hour and that um, all hindering spirits will be removed, that God will give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive and obey his word this morning. So if you have a prayer language, go ahead and start praying right now, praying your prayer language. If you don't have a prayer language, pray from your heart for about one or two minutes. Go ahead. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. She tiki manda she oka kobi anante kiada roshi leish ki badash korebi anashi kaloshi kamashki kulebi amandu loki ananda ribesh ki adash Father in the name of Jesus we come before you as humble as we know how lifting you up telling you that you are holy Almighty God, and that we can do nothing without you, but Lord, with you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So Father God, through your sweet Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son Jesus, we ask this morning that you will open up our hearts and spirits and minds right now as we hear from the throne room of grace. Help us to not be hearers only, but doers of the word of God. For your word says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Lord, we're praying and believing you for miracles, signs and wonders, for deliverances, Lord, right now. If there's anybody in the house who's sick, Lord, we understand that by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. So we don't have to worry about trying to get it because it's already ours. If there's somebody in the need of deliverance from something, from a stronghold or bad habit, Lord, we thank you that it is all in you, in the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus upon this house right now. I speak blessings over the pastor of this flock right now, over the deacons, over every minister and person in their rightful places right now. And I bless this congregation, both members and visitors. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. First and foremost, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everywhere I go, whatever house I go in, I don't consider myself a visitor because I'm in the house of God. Amen, somebody? Yeah. I want to thank this powerful man of God Amen. for asking me, for being obedient to the Holy Spirit and uh, his lovely wife and everybody in their rightful places. I want to thank my Godfather for coming and supporting me and my mother. She's been there ever since I grew up playing football and any activity I've been in, now I'm preaching and she's still there. Thank God for mothers. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say I won't be before you long, because usually when you hear a preacher say, I won't be before you long, usually he's before you a long time, right? All right. I will say this. I'm going to speak as long as the Holy Spirit speaks. And when the Holy Spirit stops speaking, I'm going to sit down. How about is that deal? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, as Pastor was saying, and I'm not advocating that sickness is, is part of God's will, because it's not, but I hadn't been sick in like two years, right? So a few weeks ago, I, work, I was working graveyard, and um, I had to get up that morning. I didn't even sleep two hours. I had to get up, go to an appointment, and then I got back home, and I tried to lay back down before going to work that night, but I, so let's just say I didn't really get any sleep. So my immune system got weak on me, shut down on me, and um, so I got a cold. Not real bad, but you know, just enough to make me notice it. So I was trying to get over my cold last week, and I kind of had some little allergies still acting up. So I was heading to Walmart, I took a shower, I was ready to wind down for the night, and the Lord laid it on my heart. Go to the pharmacy department in Walmart and get you some Claritin D. So that's all I thought. And I'm coming back to the house. I'm going to wind down. So I went in there. And like he said, 
I was walking right across the front. Didn't want to be bothered with nobody. They hoping nobody didn't know me. Didn't, hoping nobody would notice me. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I just wanted to get my medicine and go home. So anyway, as I was headed to the pharmacy, I heard somebody say, hey. And I kept walking. And then the Lord just stopped me in my chair. He said, back up. So I backed up. And it was him in the back of the line, the last aisle. He said, come here, son. He said, I need you to preach for me um, Sunday. And without hesitation, I said, yes, sir. And that's just how it happened. And, you, know, you know it's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all please bear with me. My throat's still a little, a little weak and scratchy, but we're going to do what we can. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, today I got a message from the Lord entitled The Revelation of Jesus Christ and, of course, The Unveiling of Mysteries Inspired by the Holy Spirit. This message today comes in the form of a prophetic warning. And um, between Monday and this morning, you can ask your pastor, we have not talked, have we? We have not talked. So now if God calls something out, and I'm not trying to be messy or I'm not prying, but if something gets called out, trust me, your pastor has not told me anything about any of y'all. Amen? But I believe today, the message comes today as a prophetic warning, more so not to anybody individually, but more so to the nations. All right? It's things that we need to be aware of. And I heard a few years ago, I heard a pastor say that you might preach a lot of sermons in a year, but usually God only gives you one or two messages, maybe three. So I kind of discovered that a few years ago. And this year, there is, I've preached a lot of sermons this year, but there's only been one message God has given me, and that's 2 Chronicles 7.14. And God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. How many, how many of y'all know that America's in dire need of healing right now? Then later on in the year, he gave me this. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, when it tells us to intercede and pray for those in authority. Amen. So how many know our president needs prayer? Our government need, leaders need prayer? Anybody in a place of authority needs prayer. We need to intercede for these people for the benefit and sake of the common people, us, that they're over. Amen? So now, they need the wisdom of God. They need the guidance of God in order to have authority over us. Amen? So today, I'm going to be, I'm going to be um, coming out of uh, Luke chapter 17 in the New Testament, if you want to go ahead and find that scripture. Um, you don't have to turn here, but I'm just going to share with you Amos 3 and 7, which says, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So in other words, before God brings any judgment or destruction on a people or a nation, he usually sends warnings through his servants, the prophets. Now in the Old Testament and New Testament, you'll see many, many instances where if the people repented, God spared that land. Take Nineveh, for instance. When Jonah went through and prophesied to Nineveh of their destruction, they got in sackcloth and they fasted as a way of repenting. And God spared Nineveh. Now, there's been other instances where the people ignored the prophets and God wound up destroying that land. And we're going to talk about a couple of these instances in our scripture passage today. So now... Um, if you'll go to Luke chapter 17, we're going to look at verses 26 through 30. And while you're finding that, this is a prophecy that Jesus gave concerning what it's going to be like when he returns. All right? How many know we don't hear enough about the return of Christ these days? So now, if, you, if you'll look with me in verses 26 through 30... I'm going to just kind of point something out before we read this. But in verses 26 and 27, it talks about the days of Noah. Then verses 28 and 29 talks about the days of Lot. But there was two distinct things that took place in these two different eras of time. And I'm going to point it out here in just a minute. And Jesus said this is how it's going to be when he returns. As it was 
in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. All right, that's one area. All right, now, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So in verse 27, the flood destroyed them all. In verse 29, fire and brimstone destroyed them all. Verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed or when he returns. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to keep your Bibles open to this scripture passage just for a few moments. And I just want to point out some things here. Okay, when you see a pattern of all these things that's taking place, the, the marrying, the giving in marriage, the eating, the drinking, and buying and selling all this stuff, planting and building, other words, what this is saying is people were going on about their daily lives, business as usual, having no idea of the destruction and judgment that was coming. Okay, this day and age, what are we doing? We're carrying on about our daily routines as though nothing is going to happen, right? All right. So now this message again today is in an effort to wake you up, to warn you, to let you know that some pending judgment is on its way. Uh, before I continue on, let me just kind of give you a brief little outline of what I'm going to be talking about and just kind of prepare your hearts and minds for what the Lord is saying today. Okay, like I said, this is a, a warning to motivate repentance, signs to look before before Jesus' return. I'm going to share a prophetic dream that I had with y'all, and uh, we're going to talk about the mark of the beast a little bit. I'm going to also share with you a couple of strategies that the enemy uses, and I'm going to tell you right now, Deception and fear are two of his biggest strategies. Does anybody agree with that? Amen. And then we're going to close with an urgency for the upbuilding of, for, for more laborers into the kingdom, all right? Because how many know that the harvest is great, but the laborers are few? Amen? Okay. If you will look with me again in this scripture passage, I want you to notice something. In verse 27, we're talking about the days of Noah now. It says, they did eat, they drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, notice in verse 28, it says, Likewise, they did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built it. But notice something. In verse 28, it didn't mention anything about marriage. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this. Okay, look. In Noah's days, they were marrying wives, and they were given in marriage. Okay, you don't have to turn here if you don't want to, but if you look at Genesis chapter 6, in the first four verses, it said that the sons of God came down unto the daughters of men, and it saw that they were fair to look at, and they took unto them wives as many as they pleased. Verse 4 said there were giants in the land, and the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore them children. And these men became mighty men, world of renown. Okay, these were giants. Okay, if you study in the Hebrew, in the Hebraic language and history, it tells you that these giants were referred to as Nephilim. Okay, so when you have Satan and his fallen angels, the word Nephilim means fallen one. Okay, that's, these were the giants. Okay, so then it went further to say in verse 9, that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Okay, it didn't mean that Noah was perfect like flawless or without sin. It meant that his DNA was not contaminated with this fallen angelic DNA. Now, we think that it was just ordinary sin of man that caused the flood, but God was intended to wipe out this race of giants that was plaguing the earth because they were spreading. And, it was, and if, you, if you just look, and look at this hard enough, and God will give you the understanding and the revelation. You'll see they corrupted the animals too. God wiped out every creeping thing, every animal, every fowl of the air. God wanted to wipe this thing out and start over with Noah, whose DNA was not contaminated. Amen? 
Now, fast forward to Lot's days. Okay, it didn't say anything about marriage, right? Okay, what's going on today? Homosexuality and lesbianism. That's what's going on today. Just like it was in the days of Lot, right? Our U.S. Supreme Court last year ushered in without our consent, all of a sudden, it was just one day on the news, all 50 states legalizing same-sex marriage. Now, you know that's an abomination against God. It was an abomination when he first wrote it. It's an abomination now, and 20 million years from now, it's still going to be an abomination in the eyes of God. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise right about now. Hallelujah. So now, we got this, and, and I, I, trust me, I love gays. I just don't, don't condone what they do, all right? So we're not condemning or judging anybody. We're just attacking the issue, right? Glory to God. So now, what's going on now is already fulfillment of Lot's days. But now, what about Noah's days? Okay, we don't have any fallen angels right now. They're, they're invisible. Okay. But God, but Jesus said in verse 26, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Okay? Bear with me. Let me share this prophetic dream that I had with you, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to help bring out what I'm getting ready to share with you. God, I wish my throat wasn't dry. Okay, last year, it was on a Wednesday morning before Thanksgiving, November the 25th, 2015, right before I woke up, I had a dream that I was in this desert-like setting, and I went into a, like a cafe-like place. One of my knees buckled, and I, my, I, hit, the, I hit the ground. I don't know why, what the deal is about my knee buckling. I guess it was just to get my attention. And so I looked up, and I saw a black woman with locks in her hair, and she was sitting down at a bar holding a little girl. I don't know if it was her daughter or not. And then I saw a name flash in front of my face. I don't remember what the name was, but I saw the letter Q and I saw the number 11. Okay, so that kind of faded away. I left that place and I went into another place. Same exact thing happened. Knee buckled, I looked up, saw the woman with the locks in her hair holding the little girl. Looked up, saw the name, saw the letter Q11. So that happened about two or three times. How many of you here has ever had a dream that happened the exact same way twice or more than once? Anybody in here ever had that? Now, if God gives you a dream one time, it's enough. But when he tells you two or three times, that tells me God is trying to tell you something. So in the dream, I was still in the dream, and I remembered I was asking after about the second or third time that this happened, I said, what does this mean? And listen, y'all, this is going to sound bizarre, but just bear with me. I looked on the computer screen in the dream, and I saw two monsters fighting. It's like on TV, you know, Godzilla and them fighting. It was just like that. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what was in my dream. But what I got in my spirit in that dream was, it was some type of biochemical technology and operation, you know, some type of science fiction type stuff. So anyway, I, I eventually woke up, and just in getting ready, I was seeking God for an interpretation of this dream. And out of curiosity, I went to my computer, and I went to Google, and I typed up, what is Q11? And to my surprise, things popped up. That was the first time God has ever dealt with me about something that I had no idea existed, but he told it to me in a dream. Okay? And when I went to the site, it had something to do with the pharmaceutical industry. And you know the pharmaceutical industry deals with drugs, right? Okay? There's a Greek word called pharmakia. That's where we get the words pharmacy, pharmacist, and pharmaceutical. Okay, the word pharmakia means sorcery. Okay, sorcery is the mixing of potions and spell casting. So the mixing of potions, that's where you get the drugs. The spell casting, that's where the addiction comes in at. You see how this all ties in? Okay, so now, this is what God began to reveal to me. And he gave, this, he gave me this revelation in phases. Um, but when he first gave it to me, it was like a general revelation of what the dream was saying. So what God was telling me was that, that um, Satan uses the spirit of sorcery to um, control and manipulate humanity with what's called dependency. 
what God told me here. You already know this, but I'm just bringing it more to light. You already know this, but we know that the drugs don't heal you. The drugs is not for a cure, but it temporarily, it gives you temporary relief, all right? But you have to keep going back to it and taking it over and over and over and over and over again. And what, what do people think? If I don't have my medicine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die, right? That is a lie from the enemy, right? Now you see how Satan uses this spirit to make us depend on stuff, even over-the-counter medicine. Now, do you know that prescription drugs are abused more than illegal drugs in the streets? I found that out a long time ago. Now, the two monsters fighting in the video, I'm going to get back to the woman and child in just a minute, but I got to say this, and this is how I came up with the 2 Chronicles 7.14. The two monsters fighting in the video represents two nations at war, and it could be possibly Russia and America, unfortunately, or then again, it could be Russia attacking Israel. You know, Israel is the apple of God's eye. Yeah. Anybody mess with Israel, you get completely wiped off the map. Yeah. If you look in Ezekiel 38 and 39, it talks about the kingdom from the north coming in and attacking and so forth without going into details, just kind of scratching the surface. So um, now back to um, the woman and the child. What God told me was that the woman and the child represents humanity that's dependent on drugs. And so, um, now listen, this is not me saying, look, stop taking your medicine. I don't want you to do that now. Like, hey, God gave you common sense, right? Now, I'm not saying don't take your medicine. I'm just making you aware of this is what's going on. Because, you know, whatever's in physical manifestation, the spirit realm is behind it. Okay, now, what I'm about to get into is how this could be implemented into the mark of the beast, okay? Because it's a very sinister strategy that's going on right now because, see, right now, you know, if you're going to the doctor and parents, don't just let, let the doctors just give your kids any kind of medicine. Where I work at, you know, I work at a juvenile facility with this younger brother, Minister Hartley, Tyrone Hartley, and first thing they want to do if the kid is acting too hyper, thank you, sister, just give him a pill. And I want to let you know, people, if, if when you go to your family doctor, if all he want to do is get you on up out of there, just here, just give you a prescription, he's a pill pusher. No disrespect to your family doctor, but you might want to pray about it and ask God to show you if this is the right doctor you need to stay with or should I go somewhere else. Glory to God, somebody. And another thing God told me was if you ever have a loved one in a hospital, stay, stay by their side as long as you can. And if you got to work, Hire somebody to sit with your mom or your dad or sibling or spouse or whoever. Do not leave them unattended because from research that I've done within the last few years, the government is pushing these hospitals and doctors. If they don't have good insurance, if they're not a wealthy person, just give them a sugar pill and let them die. They're going to die anyway. How many times have you heard somebody say they was doing fine the other day, all of a sudden they're dead? The hospitals are killing these people. Shoot them up with morphine, cover it up, sweep it under the rug. See, that kind of stuff never gets exposed out there. But this is stuff that's happening. And I just told you what Amos 3, 7 says. God will reveal it to his prophets and servants if something's going on. It's up to you to take heed to it. Now, I want to take your attention to Daniel, the second chapter. This is in the Old Testament. What happened in um, the days of Lot and in the days of Noah were types and shadows, what they call types and shadows. Yeah. Somebody say types and shadows. Types and shadows. These were types and shadows of what's going to happen in the future. Okay. I'm oh, sorry about that. Types and shadows. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Basically, a type and a shadow just simply means just something that occurred in the past, and the same thing is going to reoccur in the future. That's basically all it is, all it means. Okay. Melchizedek was a type in the shadow of Jesus Christ, right? Some, some scholars say that he was a form of Jesus Christ. We don't know for sure. But anyway, have you found Daniel chapter 2? Glory to God. All right, we're going to look at verse 43. Okay. Remember what happened in the days of Noah, right? 
So we, so we, so we clear on this. The fallen angels, not all of them, but, but a set of fallen angels came unto the daughters of men in the days of Noah and took women unto them wives, right? And had children with them. So their seeds mingled with the seed of men. Okay, look at Daniel. Now this is a prophecy of what's going to happen in the future. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43 reads, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now, if you fast forward to Ephesians chapter 6, Paul talks about, we, before we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, yeah. principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, yeah. and so forth. Right. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Okay, right now, these entities are invisible. They're working right now behind the scenes. Powers are basically spirits of authority, uh -huh. principalities. The word comes from the word principle, which means to govern or rule, okay? Right. So now you have principalities, and their specific assignment is to influence governments and nations. Yeah. Okay, now, so in this right here, when it talks about the ten toes, about the iron being mixed with clay, I believe that the iron is the principalities and powers, and I believe that the clay is the human governments. And it says that, but they shall not cleave one to another. Now, how is, yes, sir. So now, how is this going to mix? <clears throat> it's, it's not going to mix. That's right. Come on. Now, but you're going to say, well, brother, All right. if the demons are not in full manifestation, how are they going to do the same thing that they did in the days of Noah? All right. Come on, well, I'm glad you asked. Come on. Come on, because this day and time, we got what's called technology. Okay, have you ever heard of cloning? Have you ever heard of hybrids? Transhumanism? All right. So now we have what's called an RFID chip. Who's ever heard of RFID chip? Only one person? My word. Hey, you know what? That's why the Holy Spirit got me here this morning. RFID means radio frequency identification. For years, scientists have been using it on animals. They, they implant the chips inside animals so that they can be um, identified, right? Okay. So now, with these chip, RFID chip implants, um, not, 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 not globally, but just U.S., you know what the U.S. net worth of these RFID chip implants are? 8.89, not million, billion U.S. dollars. So now, what does that tell you if the whole world is implementing this RFID chip, just think what it is globally. Come on, come so now you have what's called crossbreeding. That's where we get the word hybrid from. So when you, when you mix two different DNAs of two different animals, you come up with a mixture of something that God didn't even create. And he said in Genesis 128, let everything produce after its own kind. Right. So anything that produces otherwise is an abomination before God. Yeah, Amen. So now, how will this play into our modern society? Well, listen, let's go to um, the book of Revelation. And we're going to close with two different scripture passages. If you'll go with me to Revelation chapter 12. All right. Did y'all know that there's coming a time where there's going to be what's called a seven-year tribulation. Have y'all heard of that? Okay, we know that there's going to be a man called the Antichrist that's going to come on the scene. He's going to rule the world, but it's only going to be for 42 months. All right? So now, if you're in chapter 12, we're going to see that there's going to be a war that broke out in heaven. Now, this has not occurred yet. Now, let me just back up just a minute while you're finding that. Okay, in, in, in 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul talks about being caught up in the third heaven. So the very fact that the Bible says that there's a third heaven means that there's got to be a first heaven and a second heaven. Okay, the Bible doesn't mention a second heaven. Now, Genesis, it talks about the atmosphere and the stars being the first heaven. So the question I asked God was, where's the second heaven? 
Now, I thought it was out of space. Some of you may think the same thing. And then past that is the third heaven where God dwells. But it's not what God showed me. The second heaven realm is the invisible realm where angels and demons war over humanity. Well, brother, show me some scriptures. I will. God showed me one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. In Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 through 14, and the angel of the Lord touched Daniel and said, I have come to answer your prayer. God heard your prayer the first day you prayed it, but the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. I could not get to you right away, and God had to send help in order that I could get to you. Okay, fast forward to the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 refers to Satan as the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. The air is invisible, right? Yeah. Glory to God. So now, we might not can see these entities, but we sure can't feel the effects of them, right? When you got your, when your spouse is acting up, when your kids is acting up, when your coworkers is being messy and being backbiters, you can, you can see the result, can't you? Let's look at Revelation chapter 12. Verse 7 through 9 reads, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, we're going to jump down to verse 12. And let me tell you something real quick. I do know that angels and demons do exist because through dreams and visions, I've seen them. Some of them have human-like forms. Some of them look like creatures. And I know that if you saw a black figure seven or eight feet tall with red eyes and you wasn't in the spirit, it would was, it was, it was spook you. As white folks say, freak you out. It would freak you out. I've seen that. And so I know they ain't real. Glory to God. Now, let me tell you how these things are going to be in full manifestation. Look at verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, plural, more than one heaven, right? And ye that dwell in them. Now, here's the part that we need to start being concerned about. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. Now, how many years have we been reading this scripture passage? How many years have we been reading the book of Revelation and this has never jumped out at us for a long time? I've, I've never read, I've read this, but this never stood out to me like this until within the last year or so. And God just really started pouring out some things that, that's going to be happening in the last days. Now, I want to take your attention to chapter 13. Just one chapter over. And we're going to read three short verses. And we're going to close this thing out. Amen? Amen. All right. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. Now, we done talked about, in earlier in the chapter, it talked about the beast, the first beast coming up out of the sea, which is the Antichrist. All right. Both a man and a system. Yes. Okay. And then verses 11 on down, it talks about the second beast coming up out of the earth. And that's going to be the false prophet. Okay. He's going to work lying signs and wonders to deceive people. I told you that two strategies the enemy uses is deception and fear. Yes. Okay. Verse 16 says, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. All right. Rich and poor. No matter what status of life you live in, that no man might buy or sell unless he had that mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. Everybody's familiar with 666, right? Okay, now, how do you control the world? By controlling the food and water supply. If you don't have this mark, you can't, you can't buy or sell. So basically, this is a pledge to what's called a new world order. 
This is a pledge to a one world government, one world economy, one world religion. And this has been going on ever since the days of the Tower of Babylon back in Genesis chapter 11. And so Satan, no matter how God has stopped him in his tracks, ever since Satan is always trying to come up with a plan. And he tried to keep, by, by contaminating man's um, genetic form, he tried to stop the man, um, son of God, Jesus, from coming on this earth by contaminating his DNA. Okay. Now, let's get back to the RFID chip thing. Okay, now, we talked about the crossbreeding that, that scientists have been trying to do with different animals. Now, you got what's called performance enhancement drugs. It's, a lot of people call it steroids. Now, people are, are looking for that next quick fix. They want a pill to lose weight. They want a pill to gain weight. They want a pill to feel better. They want a pill to stimulate their sex drive. They want a pill to, you know what I'm saying? So now, here's where the deception comes in at. People are so doped up, they don't have sense enough to know what's good for them and what's not good for them. People so doped up, they're going to believe the lie. And I believe that's the strong delusion that God is talking about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, when he says that he shall send them strong delusion because they refused the truth. So now, let's go back to um, the RFID chip. Now, in case you're not aware, in Australia, earlier this year, they started, they started demonstrating this chip in human beings. I read an article not too long ago where a lady had this chip in her right hand. And all she had to do was go to a store and wave her hand and purchase things. That's a sign of it. Now, I'm not saying that's what the mark of the beast is. It's just a possibility. So now, can you imagine once, once Jesus comes and raptures his bride from the earth and the seven-year tribulation is going on, the evil that's being restrained right now, if you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about the restrainer. The restrainer being the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit inside us, the church, as long as he who now restrains lets, he will, you know, not be able, the Son of Man will not be revealed until he be taken out of the way. That he that is talking about is the Holy Ghost. Right. So now once he is taken out of the way, then shall that wicked, the Antichrist, be revealed. So now once we up out of here, the restrainer, now we know since God is omnipresent, he ain't going to be taken out of the earth. He's going to still be here, but he's going to withdraw his restraining power so that evil can run its full course. Right. Glory to God. So now, once evil's taken out of the way, once that war takes place in the middle of the tribulation, once Michael and his archangels defeat Satan and his angels and kick them out of the second heaven realm, they're going to be on the earth just as clear as you and me can see each other. So now... With the technology that we have, going back to the days of Noah. Now, when you only have a seven-year tribulation, you don't have time to raise kids, so they're not going to be sleeping with women. What they're going to do is possibly put their DNA into this RFID chip, and the government is going to be so bent on making you take this chip so that we have all your documentation. All you got to do is wave your hand, or if you want superhuman abilities, all you got to do is take this chip in your right hand and you'll be able to live longer. You don't have to worry about dying prematurely. And because of people being so doped up on all these other drugs, they're going to believe the lie. Excuse me a minute. Hopefully I'll be feeling better next time I come here. All right. So now... If you take this chip, why is there such an urgency not to take the mark of the beast? Okay, in Revelation chapter 14, thank you, Holy Ghost. I almost forgot this part. I always thought that um, when Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, 14, he said, and this gospel shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Okay, the end of what? The end of the age of grace, because once Jesus returns... That's it. Everybody's had their opportunity to repent, right? So now, when he said that, I always thought that humanity was going to be the one preaching the gospel. You know, we've been trying for over 2,000 years. We still ain't got it accomplished yet. But has anybody honestly 
Honestly, has anybody in here ever remember reading where angels was going to be preaching to humanity? Has anybody in here ever read that? You have, Pastor? Okay. Got somebody with me. Okay. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7 says, And I saw an angel flying through the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel to preach to every inhabitant on the face of the earth, to every people, kindred, tongue, and nation. All right? Then verse 8 says, There's a second angel declaring the fall of Babylon. Babylon is fallen. And in verses 9 and 10, a third angel is speaking to the people on the earth. Yeah. It says, if you have taken the mark of the beast, or if you worshipped him, his image, you shall taste of the wine of the wrath of God. Right. So now, it's gotten so desperate to the point now to where God's sending his angels pleading with humanity, repent, I don't want to destroy you. Don't take the mark. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Fast forward to Revelation chapter 16, verse 2. And the first angel went out and poured out his vow, and a noisome and grievous sore broke out on those who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Okay, why is there such an urgency not to take the mark of the beast? Because when Jesus died and bled on the cross, he shed his blood for humanity there's no redemption for angels. That's right. So once you've con contaminated your DNA with the DNA of angels, then there's no redemption for you anymore. So that's why God is saying, don't take the mark. When God gets to a point to where he's so desperate that he's sending angels to preach to us, that's serious. All right. That's yeah. serious business. That's right. I just want to make a declaration right now. Ain't nobody putting a chip in my hand or my forehead in Jesus' name. Y'all with me? If you with me, give the Lord a shout of praise right about now. God said, if my people, not the world, not sinners, but if my people who are called by my name shall pray and humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, the problem is we ain't got enough laborers. You might have been in church all your life, but you haven't given your life to Christ. Let me tell you, your best friend ain't got a heaven or hell for you. Your parents don't have a heaven or hell for you. Your children don't have a heaven or hell for you. You better fear the one that's got the power to put both the body and soul in hell right now. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Have you made that choice right now? Stand to your feet. Glory to God. I want to open up the altar right now. We're not talking about joining the church. But if you're not for sure where you stand right now, there's an urgency you know, the few preachers that's preaching the word, we're doing what we can. But we need more than just preachers. It's out there in the field. The harvest is outside these walls, church. The harvest is outside these walls. So we need you when you go to Walmart, when you go to Winn-Dixie. If you come across somebody, all you got to do is simply witness to somebody. It don't take all this, what I'm doing, what it took me 30, 45 minutes to do. All you got to do is simply say, hey, Brother or sister, do you know Jesus? Just as simple as that. If they don't, then lead them to the Lord. It's just as simple as that. Pray the sinner's prayer. Hey, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Just that simple. If you're sincere in your heart, you've become a child of God. Amen, somebody? Glory to God. <clears throat> so by chance, <clears throat> if there's somebody that doesn't know for sure where they stand, if you would come up right now to the front, to give your life to Christ. We always want to give you an opportunity to do that. I'll never take for granted that everybody in the house is saved just because you've been in the church, just because you look holy. But we always give you an opportunity <clears throat> if you never really thought about it. You know what? I don't know if I'm saved or not. Come on up right now. Glory to God. Now, if you feel like you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, 
you may have gotten saved in the past, but you um, feel like you've been slack, slacking off, you want to rededicate, come on up, come on down right now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Everybody in here is human, right? Pastor's human. I'm human. Pop's human. All of us in here are human. <clears throat> How many know that we need to intercede for our nation? We need to intercede for... We need to intercede for our president, for the one people that's running for president. Not to tell you who to vote for, but, you know, we need to pray for those people. Because our lives are going to be in their hands in a few months. Or if somebody's got a situation going on in their life and you want to pray, bring it to the Lord. Come on up right now. Don't be ashamed. Take a step of faith if you want to see some things change in your life. You've been praying for something for a long time and you've been waiting for God to answer your prayer. Come on down, bring it up to the altar right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That's a good shepherd. Lead by example. Ain't no shame in it. I was going to say, I'll come down if, if nothing else. Let y'all lay hands on me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If, if y'all would, if everybody would, just hold your hands toward these men of God right now. <clears throat> Definitely. So how many know that, that the enemy is constantly throwing assignments at these men of God? Not just them, y'all as well. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for speaking today. We want to thank you for bringing that word today. We want to thank you for using me today, Lord. We give honor and glory to you. And, Lord, we just want to lift up these powerful men of God who took a step of faith, Lord. Whatever their situation is right now, Lord, you know, Lord. And, Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, with a fresh anointing, with a fresh touch from heaven. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless and anoint their marriages, Lord. Bless and restore what's broken in their lives right now. Lord, I ask you a blessing and equip this pastor of this wonderful church, Lord, right now, Lord. Place a fiery hedge of protection around him and his family right now and around this church. In the name of Jesus, we bind any demonic assignments right now. In the name of Jesus, we command you to cease from your activities. In the name of Jesus. And we just loose ministering spirits of healing, restoration, and full recovery upon them right now, Lord. In the matchless name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. Amen. God bless you, saints. Yeah.